Hello. This video, The Failing Narcissist, provides you with a brief overview of the interrelationship between the narcissist, the appliances in the fuel matrix, fuel, and what happens when fuel runs low. As you should be aware from my work, the narcissist is driven, either unconsciously or consciously, in the pursuit of the prime aims, control and fuel, character traits and residual benefits. Fuel is what powers us, and it is imperative for you to understand this concept, and with that in mind, you can do no better than access my book, Fuel, which you will find on Amazon. If you search against HG Tudor Fuel, you will find it. Please do read that. It will provide you with a wealth of information that will assist you in understanding narcissism and protecting yourselves. This video examines an aspect of fuel within the narcissistic dynamic. Everybody who is part of our fuel matrix plays a part in maintaining our existence. Our construct, that which imprisons the creature, that which we want the world to see, must be maintained in order to preserve our existence. If not, we begin to fade away as the construct crumbles and collapses. The maintenance of this construct is reliant on the provision of fuel, and you, as an appliance in the narcissist fuel matrix, play an integral part in that. How do the various types of appliance mesh together, then, in order to prevent us from fading away? We draw fuel from primary, secondary and tertiary sources. This is the hierarchy of the fuel matrix. These sources vary in potency and are affected, of course, by the method of the delivery of fuel. Fuel comes in three strands, potency, frequency and amount. The status of the appliance within the fuel hierarchy affects potency. The primary source remains the most important source of fuel, since it is this person, usually the intimate partner, who we are with more than anybody else, but also has the greatest emotional reaction, hence potency, to what we say and do. Therefore, this person provides us with the most fuel, the most frequent fuel, and the most potent kind. They are also someone who, of course, satisfies the prime aims. The primary source is naturally the most important fuel provider because of the amount that they provide, the frequency by which they provide it, and their status in terms of potency. And therefore, this is why we invariably look to have a primary source and invariably one of an intimate nature. This is the intimate partner primary source. And this is why we seduce this person with such dedication, unleash such a terrible devaluation upon them, and invariably keep on hoovering following escape or disengagement. We make such an investment in you as the primary source that we regard it as our right to keep drawing fuel from you, whether that is positive or negative, whether it is now or whether it will be done next week or in 10 years' time. In our minds, invariably in the unconscious of the lesser or mid-range and the conscious of greater and ultra, you belong to us. The secondary sources are those which contribute good fuel and invariably contribute to our facade, particularly those of a non-intimate nature. Lieutenants and the coterie are drawn from the secondary sources, friends, family and colleagues, who we interact with frequently, but not to the same extent as we do with the primary source. Secondary sources don't give out the same height and fuel as the primary source. The secondary sources serve as an excellent function as part of the facade and the maintenance of this facade for upper mid for mid range and greater is important. Therefore, we invariably keep the same people in it and keep adding to it. 
Secondary sources tend to enjoy lengthy golden periods with us. This is because our call on them is intermittent, and therefore we are far less likely to regard their fuel as stale. Moreover, we can have many secondary sources, but we only ever have one primary source. Accordingly, if a certain secondary source is perhaps not admiring us as much as they ought to, but they are not challenging our control and they still provide fuel, it does not merit devaluation, and certainly not disengagement. They remain loyal, they remain part of the facade, and we will just switch to a different secondary source, because there are invariably several within the fuel matrix, to increase the fuel provision. There is no need to devalue or disengage the initial secondary source. Thus, you may see our kind have a friend who is flavour of the month because their fuel output is better than the other secondary sources in the fuel matrix, and then the fuel dips with regard to provision. But it is not a substantial concern as we just add another secondary source to the fuel matrix or switch to another secondary source who perhaps we have not seen for a couple of months. We take them off the shelf. This is advantageous as it means our energy is saved for devaluing the primary source whilst keeping a range of functioning secondary sources on hand and the facade intact. The secondary sources very rarely stop providing fuel. They have no need to. A primary source, however, may do so as a consequence of a descent into ill health caused by the devaluation or having become aware of what you are dealing with in some form, you start to learn how to tackle our kind as a response to the abuse. Secondary sources, unless intimate, rarely do so. Secondary sources are often treated to an elongated golden period, and therefore there is no need for them to back off so that they do not put themselves in a position of not providing fuel. Of course, certain intimate partner secondary sources may do that, and occasionally scapegoated non-intimate secondary sources back off, but for the most part, secondary sources do not. A secondary source, of course, may challenge our control, and if that is the case, they may well be subjected to some form of devaluation, or they are just put on the shelf and excluded. They may well be replaced. They may even be smeared and disengaged from and made to feel like an outsider, with the narcissist using the facade and other secondary sources to achieve this aim. Narcissists like to create cliques. And if anybody threatens our control, our supremacy, delivers a criticism, who is a secondary source, they will be ejected from the group, either by placing them on the shelf for an extended period of time, or, and this is rarer, disengagement. The occasion for devaluation of the secondary source is rare. It only happens in two instances. Firstly, the source has challenged the narcissist's control, for instance, a criticism to be something said to the narcissist or something done, maybe exposing the narcissist's behaviour to others. And thus fury is ignited, and the narcissist decides that this person must be made an example of, before being disengaged in order to show the rest of the coterie who is in charge. Remember, less than mid-range narcissists don't know the real reason why they're doing this. Secondly, in an even rarer instance, it may happen when the narcissist has no primary source. Most narcissists have primary sources in some regard. If there is an absence of the primary source for a period of time, say a number of weeks, the narcissist's fuel levels will have been tested. The narcissist will have sought to seduce and embed a new replacement primary source and most times, the narcissist in such a situation is able to do so with success. However, let us assume that this has not happened. The narcissist then turns to his secondary and tertiary sources, combined known as the supplementary services, service sources, and relies more than usual on them to provide him with fuel during the absence of the primary source. At first, there isn't a problem. The secondary sources provide positive fuel which is sustaining the narcissist. But if the narcissist has only a few secondary sources, then it will not be long before his fuel demands outstrip the positive fuel that they can provide. The lesser potency of their fuel, lower amounts and potentially uh, lower frequency compared of course to the primary source 
is now being exposed by the absence of a primary source. Furthermore, greater demand is being placed on these secondary sources by the narcissist for them to provide fuel. Those secondary sources have, own commi have commitments on their own time. They will have families, relationships, work, and therefore they can't provide as much fuel to the narcissist as a primary source can because they just cannot spend the same amount of time with the narcissist, either being physically proximate, on the telephone, through text messages. This is why a narcissist has a range of secondary sources, friends, family, colleagues, so that they, they do not have too much of a demand on their time. But collectively, the narcissist is drawing a little bit from each of them. It provides a reasonable section of the narcissist's fuel needs. Even then, it is still nowhere near as significant as that provided by the primary source. And this underpins the importance of the primary source. Ultimately, the primary source will always go further for the narcissist than anybody else, and they are also far more proximate. No matter how seductive, if the secondary source has to deal with his own family, his work and so on, he may not at all opportunities be able to provide fuel. If this keeps happening, combined with the increased demand and lack of a primary source, the strain on positive secondary sources will start to tell. This means that the narcissist will either have to add new secondary sources and or devalue the secondary sources to shift to negative fuel so he's sustained. Their failure with regard to the upkeep of fuel runs the risk of them now being painted black. Once upon a time, that was not a consideration because the narcissist did not rely on the secondary sources for fuel to such an extensive degree. However, because of the loss of the primary source, there is an increased demand placed on those secondary sources. They have to, in effect, up their game, although, of course, they are completely unaware of this necessity. And because of their own commitments in terms of having their own family, having their job, having their own pursuits, they are not in a position to cater for the fuel deficiency to the extent that the narcissist needs. And therefore, this drop in the amount of fuel provided means that the secondary source is at a greater risk of being painted black, therefore increasing the risk of devaluation and quite possibly disengagement. The addition of new secondary sources and or devaluation of existing secondary sources will work for a period of time with the confused inner circle friend who is a secondary source trying to work out why their supposed best friend is ignoring them and then trying to patch up the relationship. A secondary source, however, will not sustain devaluation as long as a primary source and can even infect other secondary sources by pointing out how they are being treated by the narcissist. This starts to increase the problems for lower echelon narcissists in particular. The narcissist is already suffering reduced fuel levels. There's no primary source. Secondary sources are not functioning as they should be. And now the supremacy of the facade amongst the secondary sources being challenged by some of the secondary sources within that facade. Ordinarily, that would not happen. This then increases the demands upon the narcissist. Lower echelon narcissists, essentially lower lesser, middle lesser, possibly upper lesser, lower mid range, possibly middle mid range, are the ones that will be affected by this more than the remainder of the sub schools. A word about the tertiary sources. The tertiary sources provide the lowest amounts of fuel and a lower potency. However, generally, they are also treated to lengthy golden periods. For example, the lady who works in the petrol station or the postman. Since fuel is only extracted from them on an intermittent basis for short periods of time, they neither run the risk of their fuel becoming stale nor of interacting with the narcissist in a way which is likely to result in a challenge to control and thus requires some form of malign manipulation. 
Tertiary sources sometimes can be used straight away for negative fuel, for example, upbraiding a waiter or shouting down a shop assistant. We don't regard them as necessary to the maintenance of the facade. Their negative fuel provides a useful boost, and such high-handed behaviour can be used by way of triangulation to impress a primary or secondary source, and therefore assert control over them indirectly and draw positive fuel from them. Similarly, if there is no primary source for an extended period of time, the reliance on secondary and tertiary sources increases. This means that there is likely to be an increased activity in terms of using technology to draw these people to the narcissist, such as dating sites, chat rooms, or through social media. However, if the reliance is frequent and sustained, the quality of this fuel, in terms of potency, amount and frequency will diminish quickly as those who have been attached to the narcissist in this way will be disengaged from and replaced with new remote tertiary sources promptly. Accordingly, there will be a high turnover. At the same time, the narcissist is likely to lash out at physically proximate sources more and more as the fuel level dips. This happens for two reasons. Firstly, he needs to fuel more than ever from tertiary sources, and negative fuel is more potent than positive. Secondly, the narcissist will be instinctively furious at being placed in this position through having no primary source, but he's not got one now to lash out at. So the tertiary sources bear the brunt of ignited fury. Any narcissist who does not have a primary source for an extended period of time and is not capable of managing secondary sources in an extensive way, and it's normally greater and ultra that can do that most effectively, the other narcissists will eventually alienate their secondary sources, particularly non-intimate ones. And in certain environments, for instance a small town, they will struggle to replace them as people become wise to what the narcissist is. They will not necessarily be recognised as being a narcissist, but they will be viewed as basically being cantankerous, unpleasant, nasty, an arsehole. The narcissist then lacks the energy to keep up the turnover of remote tertiary sources and spends his time continually lashing out at those who are physically proximate. At this point, the narcissist faces losing the facade, if they operate one, since so many people know about the behaviour, and therefore that has to be done in order to keep drawing fuel. This leaves the unconscious narcissism with three choices. One, the narcissist must secure a new primary source immediately. Or two, the narcissist has to move his environment so he can seek out fresh secondary sources and fresh tertiary sources who are not aware of the reputation of the narcissist. In effect, fresh victims, a fresh facade. Or three, the narcissism results in a failure and the narcissist sinks into depression, inactivity, self-neglect, i.e. a fuel crisis as the fuel levels plummet. In this third instance, the narcissist becomes a fading star. Once brilliant, magnificent and illuminating, his loss of the primary source and inability to find another means that the alluring shine is fading as a black hole awaits. He begins to fade as he enters the fuel crisis. You can see, therefore, as a consequence of this analysis and explanation of just how paramount importance the primary source is to the existence of our kind, and in particular to lesser and mid-range narcissists. This is why lesser and mid-range narcissists make such an effort to secure a primary source and then replace them quickly and thereafter hoover them back in again in the instance of where that primary source has escaped. Not only is the primary source fundamental to all aspects of the prime aims, but their fuel provision is extremely important in terms of potency, amount and frequency, and the loss of that individual, where there is not an immediate replacement, can result in the problems described in this video. Fuel levels plummet, and, turning to secondary and tertiary sources, if the narcissist can be sustained on those for a short period and then gets a new primary source, all is well. But if the narcissist is put in a position of the loss of a primary source, cannot get a new one, thereafter secondary and tertiary sources can, 
with regard to lower echelon narcissists be treated in the way that I have described so that there is a high turnover, that they stay away from the narcissist. And unless the narcissist gets that new primary source or moves to fresh hunting grounds, the narcissist will enter into a fuel crisis and become that fading star. Thank you for listening.